Finally, you're outside of the classroom and into the hospital. What you came to med school for, taking care of patients, unless you're going into pathology, radiology. But don't celebrate just yet because there is a huge learning curve ahead of you. And doing well on your clerkship, on your clinical rotations, is really important to securing a good residency. Now, your grades in these rotations is gonna be based on two things. Number one, your shelf score, your actual test exam grades. And number two, your evaluations from your supervising residents and attendings. Continue to the end of this video to learn more about the Med School Insiders Research Course Giveaway. We're giving out three all access passes to our brand new research course to three individuals that wanna level up their research game. These are nine things to avoid to make sure you secure strong evaluations. Now, before we dive into number one, a little bit of background, your third year is gonna feel like a very strong transition point. Just like your first day of medical school, you're like, oh my God, this is way different than college, at least for most of you. Third year is gonna feel the same because now you're transitioning from your preclinical to clinical years and you're no longer just studying on your own, trying to do well on exams. You're now working with a team and you're at the bottom of that totem pole in the team. And previously you were surrounded by other med students, in your clerkships, it's gonna be usually just you, maybe one other student, maybe a second one, and you're mostly gonna be interacting with your supervising residents and attendings instead. And it's no longer just focusing on the pathophys of various disease processes. Now you're also focusing on things like communication, not only with presenting to the team during your rounds, but also communicating with patients and their loved ones. How do you do that empathetically, professionally? Medicine is a team sport and to get better evaluations, you wanna be a strong team member. And what that comes down to is contributing, you know, pulling your own weight, not causing trouble, and overall fitting in. With that in mind, that brings us to number one, which is don't be unprofessional. There's actually some funny stories about some unprofessional comments from Sean and DePaul up in this video here, and they have some great stories to share. But what I wanna focus on here is timeliness, right? Because if you're showing up to the hospital late, not a good look, not a first impression. When you're a resident, you need to show up on time, actually a little bit early, to make sure you're there for patient handoff. Your supervising residents and attendings are busy enough as is, and the last thing they need to do is worry about where you are when you're supposed to be there. Being late is problematic, not only for your team, but also for patients. I mean, it's very unprofessional to keep them excessively waiting in the clinic or in the wards. As you're about to find out, if you haven't already, Physicians and physicians in training live very hectic lives and they're pulled in a lot of different directions all simultaneously. Conferences, teaching, patient care, meetings, and so much more. And we actually have a whole series of time management videos over on the Med School Insiders channel that you should check out if you want to up your time management skills. Now, apart from timeliness, how you present yourself in the hospital, the attire you wear is also gonna be very important. Attire is gonna vary based on your rotation. So as an example, for grand rounds in general surgery, it might be a little bit more hardcore and say, hey, even though you're operating at 7 a.m., you gotta show up to grand rounds at 5.30 wearing your shirt and tie. And maybe your family medicine clinic is like, you know what, show up in scrubs, doesn't really matter. And patients care too. In one survey, 53% of patients said that physician attire is an important factor during their care. Number two is don't be unprepared. This one is easier said than done because there will be times on certain rotations where you're in the hospital for 16 hours and then you wanna go home and just sleep, but then you also have some cases that next morning and you need to prepare for that. So it's like, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Either you're gonna compromise your sleep or you're gonna compromise being prepared and you need to find that middle ground. And ideally, you're gonna do more preparation during your more chill days, the days you have off, so that when you are in these situations where you're really crunched for time, then you don't have to spend as much time studying. So that's with regards to preparing for cases like in the OR. But patients that you're managing on the wards, whether that's still surgery or uh, medicine, you need to know everything about your patient. You need to know their lab values, their history, so that if the team asks you a question, you know your patient better than anyone else. But of course, don't forget what you were focusing on those first two years of med school, which is the actual pathophysiology, the disease process. You need to know your patient, obviously, but underneath that, don't forget your foundation from your first two years of med school, right? What is the disease process? What is causing it? What are the various treatments? And so on. Now, when presenting patients on rounds to your team, you wanna find that balance between being succinct while still being comprehensive. If you said every single thing about the patient, we'd be there the whole day. This isn't internal medicine. Even internal medicine doesn't include every single fact about a patient because rounds would take forever and they already take a really long time. So you're going to learn the skill initially by observing others, observe your residents, see how they present, right? You're going to take a lot of cues there. And then also just from trial and error and solicit feedback from your team so you can accelerate that learning, that, uh, learning process by tightening the feedback loop. Another thing that will make you look good is having a plan for your patient. So it's not just a matter of regurgitating what has happened previously, but what are the next steps in their management, their discharge, et cetera. As a third year, a lot of the time you're gonna be completely wrong, 
but use your best judgment, try your hardest, think through things, and your team is gonna be very appreciative that you're being proactive, you're taking the initiative, and you're being thorough. Now going back to surgery, before any case, make sure you know the disease process, the indications and contraindications for the procedure that you're doing, as well as the anatomy, because they will pimp you on various anatomical landmarks in the middle of the case. Number three, don't ask questions for the sake of asking questions, and there's a lot of you that do this. And look, questions, it's a great way to show the team that you're engaged, you're eager to learn, I get it. But when you're asking questions, just for the sake of asking questions, it's gonna backfire on you for a few reasons. Number one is they'll tell you, look it up yourself, quick Google search. So only ask things that you can't just quickly look up yourself. Number two, you're now wasting people's precious time and energy. And number three, it's suggesting that you're not prepared or you're not paying attention. And number four, no one likes to suck up. You wanna ask thoughtful, specific questions that demonstrate that you're deeply involved and engaged with your patient's care. Number four is don't be rude. And it's kind of sad that we have to say this, but we've all seen some instances in the hospital. You don't wanna be rude for a few reasons. First of all, people say don't be rude to nurses because they can make your life living hell. True, but you should treat everyone in the hospital, patients and workers with respect for a few reasons. Number one is that when you put out good vibes, you tend to get good vibes. And what that means is that you're gonna be happier, first of all, which is probably the, the biggest and end all reason right there. But in addition, if you are treating others with respect, you're giving them positive energy, you're, you're uh, getting some smiles out of people, then they're more likely to want to help you. So that nurse or that tech, they may go out of their way to now provide you some information about your patient that you wouldn't have otherwise got. Because keep in mind that Ancillary staff tend to spend more time with their patients than we do as physicians, right? Or physicians in training. So they're gonna have a little bit more intimate knowledge of what's going on with the patient. And keep in mind that when you're in the hospital, you're being evaluated at all times. And even if you think, oh, hey, this, this nurse may see me doing something that's a little bit uh, frowned upon, no big deal, everyone's connected. And maybe that nurse is the wife of some attending that's supervising you, right? Oh my God, watch me get canceled for calling the the nurse, the wife, and the attending, the husband. I should have swapped it. Called the nurse, the husband, and the, the attending, the wife. <laughs> Number five, don't let your disinterest show. There's gonna be some specialties you enjoy more than others. That's just the nature of third year. Unless you're one of the lucky few people that just loves everything, and I have met some people like that. Fuck those people. Now, I'm not saying to fake this enthusiasm, right? But don't show up apathetic either. Be proactive, try to learn from your team, and when your team asks you, hey, what are you considering? Don't be the person that pretends that you're gonna pursue that specialty just because you think it's gonna help you get a better grade. We see right through that. And I will say in all seriousness that your attitude is gonna very much shape your experience of that specialty because I hate rounding and rounding on IM for eight hours is hell to me. But for some reason, it was my first third year clerkship. I kind of enjoyed it. I think I saw the value in my team. I saw the the inquisitive nature of trying to figure out these more complex puzzles. And rounding didn't really bother me as much during my internal medicine clerkship, for whatever reason. And sometimes the subject matter isn't gonna be that engaging. I mean, who actually loves pathology? Let's be real. You're not gonna rotate on pathology in third year anyway. It's not a core clerkship, unless you choose that as your elective. But oftentimes the experience of the team is gonna shape how much you enjoy or don't enjoy a rotation. I remember ob guy was probably ob and Psych were my two worst rotations. I think I still honored both. But in ob I remember the team, there was like two or three girls and, a, and a, a flamboyant guy, and they were all just shitting on men, how terrible they were. And I was just standing there just like, awkwardly, very, very uncomfortable. Oh, sorry, Kevin, didn't notice you were there. I was like, no worries. I mean, what else are you gonna say? You're the med student that's getting evaluated, right? Number six, don't lie. Because there's so much pressure for you to know things and be on your game, it's sometimes tempting to lie when you're asked a question. Just kind of like guess, confabulate a little bit. Don't ever do that. It is terrible. And you're more likely going to get caught than not. If you're attending a resident, ask you a question, and you don't know the answer, saying I don't know is perfectly acceptable. Lying is not. And if your resident or attending catches you in a lie, which again, if you lie, they probably will, it will be reflected in your evaluation. And more importantly than your evaluation, depending on what that lie is, it can actually compromise patient care and endanger that patient. Number seven, don't share patient information. Now, in this day and age with everyone posting everything on social media, it becomes even more important because HIPAA, right? If you have any photos, videos that show a patient, you're gonna get in trouble. According to the internet, violating HIPAA is a serious crime and aggressors can be fined up to $50,000 and imprisoned for a year. 
Those who knowingly and repeatedly violate HIPAA risk suspension and losing their license. Depending on what the violation is, it would not be surprising to actually get kicked out of med school. That's why they drilled the importance of HIPAA so many times, so many different modules across all the various years of med school. They keep telling you HIPAA, HIPAA, HIPAA. Same thing applies to the anatomy lab, cadaver lab, because you have to be respectful of those donors as well. Now be careful, you may be texting your resident and attending, and you don't want to ever be texting things that make that patient identifiable. So don't be spelling out their name, right? Don't be getting up with the patient, hey, selfie time, and sending them a photo. Like, use some judgment. Number eight, don't complain. Third year is gonna be tough. It's gonna be way tougher than your first two years of med school. Third year is considered the toughest by many. And no one likes a complainer. You're just bringing down the energy. And even though it is challenging, you just gotta suck it up. If you need support, that's one thing. And confide in your loved ones and, and seek out that support. But when you're at the hospital, don't be bringing the vibes down. Sometimes you will be paired with a resident or attending that's very challenging to work with. Complaining about them is definitely not gonna help you do you any favors. I would say my psych attending and those ob residents were probably the two most miserable groups of people that I had to work with. But me complaining about that at the time wouldn't help me. If you're complaining about workload, keep in mind your supervising residents probably have a way more challenging workload and you complaining about your comparatively lower workload is gonna seem a bit insensitive, a bit ignorant, a bit selfish. Instead, you wanna see how you can lighten their load. Instead of complaining, focus on what you can control because that will completely transform your experience and you'll find it much more enjoyable. So internal medicine for me, that was the first third year clerkship. That was a huge transition. And in hindsight, I'm like, wow, I really don't enjoy internal medicine nearly as much as I enjoy some other things, some more procedural things, but I never really dreaded going in. I never was, it, it was always seen as a learning opportunity. Like, what can I do today better than I did yesterday? Let me improve my presenting skills. Let me improve my, my learning skills. Let me improve my patient interaction in bedside manner. And I'm trying on different styles. I see this uh, resident or attending interacting in one way with a patient. I'm gonna try on that style and see if that fits my personality or not. And there's learning experiences too. I remember, oh my God, this is so, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I remember my resident asked me to draw a line with marker around cellulitis on a patient's leg. And it was dark, dimly lit. I didn't want to wake the patient. And he comes back maybe the same day or maybe the next day. And he's like, oh my God, this has spread so much. And then we eventually realized that I had drawn not at the outside border of the red because I'm colorblind. I have proto anomaly. I can't see red. Or I, I can see red not nearly as well as, as other people. So where I, I was only able to see the dark red towards the center and not the very light, faint red on the edges. So just like learning that, I'm like, okay, I need to be mindful of my colorblindness to make sure the place is well lit because in the dark, it becomes much more harder. And then when it's well lit, I can actually see the red a little bit easier. And number nine, don't be selfish. Don't be a gunner. Medicine attracts a lot of type A driven, high achieving, intense individuals, some of whom are not ashamed to drag other people down, which makes no sense. Why drag other people down to make yourself seem better? Whereas you can just work on improving yourself. Two stories for you guys. Number one was chemistry lab during the summer in college. And this kid gave me the wrong answer on purpose. Fast forward a few years. Well, first of all, I got an A in the class. Um, and I know he gave me the wrong answer because we chatted afterwards. And he's like, oh yeah, I know. And then I was like, then why'd you tell me the wrong thing? Anyways, and I saw on his Facebook a few years later that he hadn't gone to med school. And I was like, karma. Other girl during my internal medicine rotations, she was like doing everything that you're not supposed to do. Answering my questions. When the team would ask me about my patient, she would butt in. Um, by the way, if the team asks someone a question, let them answer it. And especially do not answer even more so if they're asking a resident, never do that unless they ask you specifically. Anyways, she, I mean, I think she was trying to show how well prepared she was, but I think all of us were looking at her like, what is wrong with you? Like you, you realize we all see what's going on and it's not a good look. I see what's going on, resident sees what's going on, tending sees what's going on. And again, karma, some number of months later, she has some, well, I'm not gonna say anything else because it'll be kind of identifying, but just, let's just say that some shit happened to her and I was like, ah, that's karma. Remember, physicians are people. We want to work with other people who are nice to work with. And you want team players. If you're showing that you're ruthless, that you're willing to drag team members down, it's not a good look and you're not gonna get good evals. Each rotation during your third year is gonna require a little bit of a different approach. So on the Med School Insiders blog, we have this really thorough, comprehensive clerkship review series. We spent a lot of time and effort building these. 
We go through all the core clerkships, that's family medicine, internal medicine, OB-GYN, pediatrics, general surgery, psychiatry, neurology, and we tell you the resources to use, how to study, the common conditions, and the main things you need to know, all that stuff and so much more. Check out the links in the description. They're completely free, and I hope you guys enjoy. As a thank you for all of your support over the years, we wanna help three pre-med or medical students level up their research abilities. Med School Insiders is giving away three all-access passes to the Ultimate Pre-Med and Medical Student Research Course, a $300 value at this reduced introductory price, and in the coming weeks and months as we add more modules, that price will be going up. As traditional hard metrics become less heavily weighted by pro programs and admissions committees, other soft components, especially research, are now becoming front and center in determining a candidate's competitiveness. If you find yourself unsure of where to begin, or you're not making that much headway in your research projects, and you're wondering how are some of these other students crushing dozens and dozens of research projects, then this course is designed for you. We've done the heavy lifting and distilled how to become a research superstar in a stepwise and repeatable process that you can follow. These are the same systems that me and the two other creators of this course, we all used, to get dozens and dozens of publications. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to the Med School Insiders YouTube channel, subscribe to the Kevin Jabal MD YouTube channel, and answer in the comments down below, what is the biggest obstacle that you're facing with regards to research? We'll announce the winners in a community post on both channels in two weeks. Best of luck, everyone, and stay tuned for more giveaways.